Hey everyone, welcome back to Notion Lab. This is part two of the Rotary Access series. If you missed part one, click on the icon in the top right. This is the 3D printed rotary, but first, let's look at some of the options available. A quick search on eBay and a few options shows up. Mercer are way too big to fit the K40. These are advertised as K40 compatible. Full disclosure, I've never used any of those attachment and at their price point, I don't think any of them are worth it. So I started looking at some 3D printable ones. There are a few options on Thingiverse. I've created a collection of all the ones that I've found. Links will be below. I settled on this one at first by Thingiverse user BuzzKC. It's made specifically for the K40 laser. I don't have any footage of my test as it was a few months ago, but he is using a K40 with an upgraded board. My machine is stock, so the stepper does not have enough current to move what I needed it to. And the rollers are too unpredictable and would sometimes slip, so I designed my own. There are a few modifications that I've made to the design you see in this video. If you plan on making one, the final design may look slightly different than this, but uh, it won't be too different. I of course wanted something to fit within the laser's usable engraving area, at least in the X and Y. I also wanted something that could hold my workpiece without support, specifically stainless steel tumblers. So that is one of the reasons I decided on the truck type rotary. I did design support just in case, and those files will be available as well, but I'll speak more on that later. The self-centering chuck is the design of Thingiverse user MD Kendall. It's by far the easiest chuck design to print and requires no additional hardware. I am a big fan of uh, great design and this one is fantastic. It was remixed by Thingiverse user Signaler by adding more stability with a top ring, so that's the files I started with. I scaled it up and created an 8mm hole with a flat side for a hardened rod. The housing is loosely based on some of the truck type rotary axis that already exist. It might be a bit overkill but I designed it to fit two LM8UU bearings and two skate bearings. I wanted to eliminate as much friction as I could. I modified an 80 tooth pulley by Thingiverse user Crash Mat. This is all the 3D printed files needed. I printed the snap ring at 100% infill, the chalk jaws at 60% and the rest at 20%. 0.25 layer height for all. You might get away with 0.35 layer height for the bigger files to save on print time. You will need two LM8UU bearings, one NEMA 17 stepper motor, four M8 100mm hex bolt and nuts, or 5 16 inch threaded rod and nuts, two 6 or 8 skate bearings, one 8mm hardened steel rod, roughly 130mm in length, two 2020 aluminum extrusions, roughly 330mm in length each. It's much cheaper to get longer length rods and aluminum extrusions and cut it to length yourself. Aluminum can be cut with a an hacksaw and hardened rod with an angle grinder. Both tools are reasonably affordable. You also need a 200mm closed loop GT2 belt, a 20 teeth 5mm bore GT2 pulley, M5 T nuts, some metric hardware, a Dremel like rotary tool or an angle grinder. I will do my best to provide links in the description but keep in mind links do expire so I will also provide a list of all the items needed. Let's work on the assembly. It's a good idea to use a rubber mallet, but I don't have one handy, so I use a small hobby hammer. Gently tap one of the LM8UU bearings in the housing. There is a slot that is designed to prevent the housing from splitting, but you should still use caution and not apply too much force. I use one of the hex bolts to tap the bearings further into the housing and then tap the second bearing in. Next, I tap the skate bearings on both sides. Let's work on the chuck and the steel rod. 
I designed a flat side on both the truck and the 80 tooth pulley. I could have had a captive nut to secure the rod, but I wanted to make sure it would not slip, so we need to flatten two sides of the shaft, roughly 10 millimeters in length. Mine is longer in this video, but the final design is a bit different as I mentioned earlier. The best way I've found was to use some sort of sander. I'm using an angle grinder with a sanding wheel. You can also do this freehand with a rotary tool and a grinding stone. I attached a rod to a metal vise to make it easier. It's far from perfect, but it's good enough. Make sure to install the shaft from the top of the chuck. Next, we need to assemble the chuck. Slide the scroll portion with the flat side facing up. The three jaws of the chuck need to fit in a specific way. It may be difficult to see in the video, but each jaw is labeled with an A, B, and C. If you plan on having the chuck jaws in this orientation, with the tallest part of the jaws facing the center, you need to insert the jaws in the A, B, C order. It doesn't matter which slot you start with, as long as you start with jaw A, then B, and C. If you plan on having it the other way around, you need to start with C, then B, and A. I have it in this orientation because you get more reach with the jaws that way. It's a bit tricky and take a bit of finesse and patience. The jaws should meet together in the center. If it doesn't, keep trying until they do. Once done, you can install the snap ring. Time to work on the stepper motor. Install the 20 tooth pulley and slide the motor through the housing with the wires facing this way. I use four M3 screws to secure it in place loosely. Slide the chuck with the rod through the bearings in this orientation with the jaws facing away from the stepper pulley. I did it off camera, but I added some silicone grease to the bearings on the housing. It's very important to have the bearings as frictionless as possible. Next, I tap the 80 tooth pulley onto the rod. It might be hard to see, but I'm checking how much play I have between the chuck and the pulley. Ideally, you want to have as little play as possible and as little friction as possible. Just keep that in mind. Installing the belt is fairly straightforward. There's enough room to adjust the belt tension. The belt should be tight. Before we go any further, it's a good idea to make sure the rotary works. Unplug your Y-stepper and plug the rotary. If you're lucky, the rotary should rotate. If not, your stepper is wired differently than your machine, but it's an easy fix. We need to switch the red and the green wires around. Take a thumbtack and push down on the connector like so and swap the wires. It's a good idea to gently tug on those swap wires to make sure they are set. If not, there's a small tab on the connector that you need to raise. Plug everything back in and it should be working. If it's making a grinding noise, your stepper motor is stalling and there is too much friction. Check how tight the chuck and the large pulley is to the bearing. Make sure you grease those bearings and use both a grease for the LM ADU bearing and a liquid lubricant for the skate bearings. Next, install the T-nuts in the spacers and install two bolts in each of them. I'm using threaded rods cut to length. Install the spacers to the extrusion and the rotary axis to the spacers. As I mentioned earlier, I designed support but they are not needed, even with a 30 ounce tumbler cup. If for whatever reason you need your workpiece supported, you can print these parts. Also, the truck is not centered to the housing so you will need to print the offset spacer and depending on the item to be engraved you will also need longer aluminum extrusions. My K40 laser's best focal length is roughly 68 millimeters from the X-Rail so to engrave what I needed I had to cut roughly 160 millimeters by 350 from the bottom. As far as I can tell it did not affect the machine. I needed a way to adjust the machine's height I settled on these. They are meant for furnitures and were great for this application. 
they only offer adjustments up to one inch. I needed more height so I replaced the legs with 9 inch long 3 threaded rod and designed new feet. <laughs> if you made it this far, congrats and thank you for your time. I hope you find some use from these two videos and if you did please share them and leave me a thumbs up. Leave any questions you may have and I'll do my best to answer them. That's all for now and until next time, later days.